Greetings Soul Family, my name is Rashida Das and I assist people with self-improvement and spiritual growth and today we're going to be talking about happiness. <laughs> Essentially, why you're not happy and what happiness depends on more than anything to help us enjoy this life. So if you enjoy this channel and want to see more videos like it, remember to subscribe below and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content. Now this is going to be a quick video, a simple video, because I want you guys to be happy. But the number one thing I want to share with you that your happiness depends on is something that we often ignore or that we just accept as part of life. Uh, many people do it, myself included at times, but the frequency of how you do it and the intensity to which you do it will allow you to either have a good life that you enjoy and accept or fall farther into self-hate, pity, and turmoil. And this is essentially the notion of self-acceptance. I mean accepting yourself as things happen, specifically accepting your failures, accepting your mistakes, accepting your missteps, accepting all the things about you that aren't quote unquote perfect or idyllic in the way that you want them to be. Because if we can't accept ourselves, we can't grow, we can't improve, and we can't overcome the problems we're facing. But if we can learn to accept ourselves, we can grow faster than ever before and learn to rise above anything that might befall us rather than being bogged down or controlled by it. So let's talk about what this means and I'll give you an example. As many of you know, I spent a year in jail. Uh, and in that time I had to do a lot of self work for the mistakes I made and essentially come to a level of owning up to who I was and what I was doing at that point and what changes needed to be made. Now, once I got out and really found my spiritual path and found my practice and started teaching, I would not have been able to grow and to improve and to continue discovering what mattered to me if all I had done was beat myself up for my past or was to be upset with all the ways I was still messing up and still making mistakes. If I would have continued to not accept myself, to not accept the feelings of guilt or anger or embarrassment or the mistakes I made, if none of those things could have been accepted and embraced and loved in order to overcome them, I would not be anywhere near where I am now, not just in my own personal practice in life, but in my career and literally where I am in the world, in the middle of India right now. But what really made the difference for me was learning to accept myself, was learning, especially in jail, that, wow, I'm here. I'm in the worst possible place because I've done the worst possible things, I've made mistakes, and now I'm quite literally paying for them. Now I can deny that, or I can accept it. And if I accept it, I can then learn to say, yes, I did. I take responsibility, I accept these things. How can I change? How can I improve? How can I move forward? And that is what I did the entire time I was in there. And especially for a year straight after I got out, I hold myself up and focus fully on healing myself. And I realized when I was doing that, that once I started teaching and making videos and sharing content, I was never going to let myself feel guilt for those things again. Do I wish I could have done things differently? Yeah, of course. But since things did happen as they did, I gained nothing from not accepting myself. I gained nothing from denying what happened and from denying my feelings and from denying my guilt and my anger and my shame. What I gain by accepting it is a bulletproof vest consciously, right? Because when I accept these things, I can then learn to change, to grow, to improve, and above all, to move on, to move forward and to continue loving life despite the falls. And that's all it really takes. At the deepest core level is acceptance of not just our highs, but especially acceptance of our lows, especially acceptance of our mistakes, of our missteps, and of things we wish we could have done differently, but we can't. You can't go back in time, but you can move forward in this experience with power and enjoyment and excitement for the future by accepting what happened in the past and using it to fuel you. So uh, another real world example I can show you real quick, right? Literally, imagine you're walking into a grocery store, into a crowded coffee shop, right? Say you 
trip and kind of stumble and catch yourself on the ground. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that's embarrassing. <laughs> I've done that before. I have these kind of hemp sandals I wear a lot. So I do it a lot actually. I trip quite a bit uh, because I drag my feet at times. Now, if I was to stumble a little bit going into a crowded coffee shop, I would pick myself back up and I can do one of two things. Okay, I can either stand in line for the next 10 minutes in absolute mortification and self-denial of what just happened, wishing it didn't, not accepting that it happened, feeling upset, feeling angry, feeling embarrassed. And trust me, people do this. I used to do this too. And spend the whole time hating the situation, being angry, being upset, get my coffee and leave, and then the rest of my day is ruined. That's what I gain from not accepting what happened, from not accepting myself stumbling and falling. Or I can stumble and fall, laugh it off, say, oh, there was a stumble, I tripped. Well, things happen. I'll be more mindful of it next time. I'll be careful walking into this coffee shop next time. And then I stand back up in line with no issue whatsoever, no egotism, no wondering what people are thinking about me or judging me. I grab my coffee, I enjoy it, and I go about my day in a very peaceful state, continuing to adapt and improve and work and go to school, whatever it might be. That literally shows how pivotal the differences are when it comes to self-acceptance and especially whether or not we live a happy life or an upset life or a depressive life or an anxiety riddled life. The core of it is accepting ourselves, accepting our imperfections, accepting ourselves as we are and as we continue to change and evolve. Not always wishing we were already perfect or being angry that we weren't perfect in the past, but instead accepting all of the path as it is right here and now, and instead living in this moment and making the most of everything that happens, both good and bad. And the more you can learn to accept yourself on all levels, again, both your achievements, your accomplishments, and your failings and missteps, you'll become bulletproof in the spiritual sense at a deep, deep emotional level. And you'll learn to love life no matter what happens. You'll still feel the full spectrum of emotions, but the power of that is that regardless of feeling them, you're never controlled by anyone alone. You're never held back by anyone alone. And instead you can continue to commit to your true divine nature and move forward, expanding into the wholeness of what you are here to become, finding your path and living it fully and enjoying this life, which is your divine birthright. That all stems from self-acceptance. And when you begin to accept yourself is when you begin to become truly happy and truly blissful in this life for the first time and then consistently as you go about everything else you do. So that's a little tip I wanna share with you guys quickly to hopefully help you learn to start practicing self-acceptance. Again, if you wanna see specific modes on doing so, leave a comment down below and if it gets a good feedback, I will definitely think about doing some. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Rom, rom.